And here I have some room temperature milk. Nope, I don't, it's water. Hi, Bold Bakers. Here on Bigger Boulder Baking, we love all types of pizza. And one of my newly found favorites is focaccia pizza. Kevin and I absolutely love it. So we get the focaccia pizza in Italy, and we've had it in Chicago, both locations in New York and LA. So I, I can't wait to have it here homemade. So it is exactly how it sounds. It is a lovely, thick, bubbly focaccia on the bottom, and then your favorite pizza toppings on top. Easy, it is a no need recipe, so you do not need a bread machine or a mixer or anything, super easy. We're gonna start out in a nice big bowl and we're gonna add in our flour. So for this recipe, I'm using all purpose flour. You can use a bread flour and it will kind of make your focaccia a little bit stronger, a little bit chewier, which is really nice. And you just might need a little bit more water though. But that's totally doable. Now here, we're going to add in a little bit of salt because all bread needs salt. Now, as always, the recipe can be found on biggerbolderbaking.com. Okay, now we're gonna get some yeast. Little tip, keep your yeast in the fridge because it keeps it much fresher. My yeast will last for maybe a year in the fridge. And as you see, I've got enough yeast for everybody. <laughs> A little bit of yeast, put it on the other side of the bowl away from the salt. So give your yeast a little bit of a mix into the flour on one side, mix in your salt on the other side, and then mix it all together. We just don't lay them directly on top of each other. So here I have some room temperature water, and we're just going to add that in. So I say this a lot, but when adding in water, hold a little bit back just in case you don't need it all. And then we're just gonna mix it together with a wooden spoon. That's the beauty of this dough, or actually all of my no-knead doughs. They're all just mixed by hand, fermented overnight, and they make for lovely, bubbly, delicious breads, loads of flavor. And you know what I'm gonna do? This is what I like to do, and I recommend you do the same. Get your hands stuck in there, so you can feel exactly what's going on in your dough. So it seems a little bit dry, so what I'm gonna do is add a splash more water, just to bring the dough together. And there you go, just took a little splash. If you need that splash, go for it. If you don't, then totally fine. All you're trying to do is to get your dough to come together in a bowl, it is kind of wet, and then a clean bowl. So we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil into the bowl, and then just kind of coat your dough in there. And what this does, it just helps your dough, once it's growing in the bowl, it helps it glide up the sides, rather than having your dough struggle. We want to make it as easy as possible. Remember, this is a living thing. We want to keep it nice and warm, we want to feed it, we want to take care of it, and uh, make it nice and snug. Now, cover it in cling wrap, or my new trick is a shower cap, a plastic shower cap. They're reusable. They're really fantastic and they are totally uh, hole free. There's no holes in them. So it keeps your dough nice and snug. So here's what we're going to do. Let it ferment overnight, a minimum of 12 hours, but the more time you give it, the better the flavor, the better the texture, it gets to grow and develop. I like to leave mine for around 18 to 24 hours. I made one yesterday and this is what it will look like after around 18 hours. Check that out. It's really boozy. Now let me tell you something about that smell. That smell is good, it's not bad. I get a lot of comments saying that my bread dough smells bad or sour. It's not bad, it's actually perfect. It has loads of flavor, it's boozy, it's fermented. That's what it's supposed to smell like. It almost smells like alcohol a little bit, and that's a good thing. So here I have a pan. This is nine by 13 inches, nice and big. And I'm going to get a little bit of olive oil, actually a lot of olive oil, and I'm going to generously coat my pan. The thing about focaccia is that it is an oily bread, and what's, what's one of the things that makes it absolutely delicious. So don't be shy with the oil. Lovely, it's nice and coated. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add in my dough. So once you get it into the tray, just push it into the corners. Now you will notice that it pops back a little bit. This is natural, it's because of the gluten. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to cover them up again with another shower cap. That's why these things are so great because they're reusable. So what we're gonna do because it's bringing back is we're gonna let it sit here for around 15, 20 minutes, let the gluten relax. Then when we come back, we'll be able to stretch it to the full size of the pan. So it's been 20 minutes. Push it into the full size of the tin, get it nice and even. Put back on your shower cap. 
And now what we're going to do is let this sit. We're gonna let it sit for a few hours. You can go anywhere between two and four hours. And what happens is, is that it will grow, it'll develop, these bubbles will form, flavor will get even better. And we're gonna get all those lovely bubbles that you see in a focaccia. So we'll come back real soon. So it's been two hours in my nice warm kitchen and look at this focaccia, it's really bubbly. All of those gases, everything, like I said, this is exactly what we want from our focaccia. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take our fingers, our clean fingers, and just dimple the bread. Just go all over and just make these nice big divots and dimples. So here I have my five minute pizza sauce. This is on the website, super easy. Just put everything into a blender generous with the pizza sauce. Then I have some shredded mozzarella. As you can see, I've got it. I'm being very liberal with the mozzarella. Gorgeous. And then some sliced pepperoni because I adore pepperoni pizza. You can put any topping on it you want. That's totally fine. Gorgeous. Make sure you buy good quality pepperoni because it really does make all the difference. And then of course, one of my favorite kind of little touches on pizza is Italian seasoning, Italian herbs. Just a few dried ones. It just kind of, I don't know, it just gives you that flavor of a pizzeria style pizza. And then that's it. You wanna bake this guy in a nice hot oven. All of that information, time, temperature can be found on my website. So I bake my focaccia for 25 minutes and it looks gorgeous. The cheese is lovely and melty. It's all bubbly around the side and the bread has risen underneath. It's absolutely delicious. So while it's still warm, I'm going to cut in some slices for Kevin and I. And here comes my chief taste tester. We are not far behind. Look at that. Kevin, I mind because it's hot. There you go. It's a big boy. Oh my gosh. Mm. Jim, you nailed it again. This is real deal. If you mm -hmm. haven't had focaccia pizza, it's incredible. It's even like the texture, the bubbles in the dough. It's exactly what I was hoping it would be. I think actually George is reaching for some right now. Sorry, buddy. Can't quite eat yet. Oh, this is absolutely delicious. And the no knees dough has so much flavor. And I'm definitely gonna eat the yes. edges too. Yeah. The edges are good. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Recipe is on my website and I'll see you back here really soon. Thanks everyone. Not yet, bud. Oh, she's yummy. Look at that, Joe. Mmm.